Hey there everyone, this is Danielle playing some more Super Mario Odyssey while permanently crouching. Last time we collected a bunch of Minor Moons in New Donk City. This time, we're going to collect a bunch of Minor Moons in New Donk City. <laughs> There's a lot of moons to get here, but we have a lot to do. Uh, first up, we're going to have some fun. You can see those letters down there that clearly spell Mario. We're going to do something else with them. <laughs> Basically, what you're supposed to do is capture the letters to move them into the right spot, put them in order. Uh, and normally, if you try to take them to the edge here, you can't get them out of this little grassy section. But, there is a way to get them out, and we're going to be doing it. Oh, you can't get them into this pavement too, but yeah, there's just like a wall around here. Uh, we're going to be getting them out of bounds using a little bit of a glitch, and we're going to exploit that to do some fun stuff basically. Uh, I think I found it easiest to use the R to do this, so you bring it over here, just shove it into the corner. Uh, I think that way should do the trick. There we go. Uh, then you want to grab the A and put it next to it. You can get all the letters out of bounds, but it's a little tricky with some of them. There we are. Uh, we're going to get the M and put it side on. So you bring it over, over like this, and you pop it sort of like that. Uh, as you can see, it's sort of being pushed away from the other letters. That's, um, they, they try to push each other apart, but there is a way to push them together, which will allow us to get them out of bounds. And we use the scooter to do it. Uh, I, I, hinted about this earlier, this scooter, you can glitch stuff out by getting it in the right position and propping it up on a ledge. So, uh, I didn't quite get it. Uh, if you get it just sitting on the side of the M there, it will lean up against the M and push it into the other letters and therefore help them get out of bounds, basically. So, we want to line up carefully. There, it should look like that. Then you just capture the M. Start walking, it'll get pushed into the R, then you can capture the R again, and it's out of bounds. So now we can take this pretty much anywhere we want. Um, there's a couple of interesting traits this has. There are no captures in New Dong City that you're supposed to be able to take anywhere like this. So a couple of things will act strangely if you take the R near them. Uh, you can see that taxi there we can capture. It activates going to a sub area, but the way that works is when you drive past where it says stop there, in any capture going past there, it will activate. So if we took the R over there, we would go into that we would go into that sub area, even though we're not using the taxi. Uh, I'll demonstrate that in a second. Uh, first, I'm just going to have a bit of a look around. So yeah, this is pretty funny. Um, you can get it most places. It can't jump or anything, so you can't get everywhere. Uh, but you can wander around and explore the city a bit, which is fun. Uh, the reason we've actually done this is that it's one of the various ways to cheese a certain moon we'll be getting in a moment. Uh, ba -ba. You can take it up the stairs here. It's about the only way to get it off the ground, I think. Because it can't jump or anything. And from there you can jump down into this little umbrella, which is kind of fun. It doesn't actually bounce, it just sort of sits there, as you can see. Um, also, the way it behaves around the taxis is kind of strange. If Mario is in, like, if Mario has captured the, uh, captured the, uh, then the taxis will actually stop, so they don't run him over. Uh, but if you wait for it to come around the corner, hang on. If you put the R just there and leave it, the taxi will drive into the R, and then you can be inside a taxi. Which is fun. Um, whoa! Oh yeah, um, and then that happens. <laughs> um, basically the game tries to push you out of the taxi, it pushes really, really hard, and it launches you off into the void. Uh, we'll have to get those back out of bounds again, because we haven't done what I intended to do with them yet. Uh, that's alright though. So yeah, we just bring the R over here, like we did a moment ago. Uh, I think we put it that way. Uh, and you want another letter next to it just to convince it to be pushed out of bounds instead of sliding off to the side, basically, is the reason to put that letter there. 
Uh, then you get the M. This isn't too tricky to do. You just gotta sort of know the right positioning and then it's fairly easy. Just bring this over here. Position yourself like that. Uh, then we go get the bike. Uh, the scooter actually despawns if you leave it there for a little while, so it's usually a good idea to go and get it after you put the letters in place. Since it's really close anyway, it's not a big deal. That was terrible. Uh, just get back on the bike. You can just press Y to get onto the bike if you're nice and close. Uh, like that, instead of throwing Cappy, you will just hop onto it. Which is handy sometimes. Bit of a handy feature. Okay, there we go. Uh, so you capture the M. Well, you try to anyway. And you walk into the side here, which will make it push. Oh, uh, that wasn't quite lined up right, I think. But yeah, we want to just get the, the R back out of bounds. Where we did a moment ago. And the reason we're doing this will become apparent in a second once I manage to do it again and can use it for a useful purpose. Okay, there we go. Now we get to the R, and we're out. So the most useful thing about this glitch is the fact that you can take the R over here to the jump rope challenge. Um, there's no check to see if you happen to be using a capture like this, so you can just do this. Uh, put the R in the right spot and just stand there on top of it, and that counts as always getting the jump. Um, there are a couple of ways you can sort of cheese this cheese this here. Uh, another way used to be you could talk to Talker 2 in a certain way and it would glitch it out. That was patched. This hasn't been patched. This still works in the latest version. Um, so basically you just want to stand here for a long time because there's a moon at 30 jumps and there's a moon at 100 jumps. Um, we could also have done this by getting the scooter and jumping with it instead of using Mario alone. That works too and that's obviously intentional because the scooter is just there. Uh, but this way is much easier, and I like having the R out floating around in the world, I think it's funny. Um, if you do this without permanently crouching, Mario actually falls asleep on top of the R, which I think is funny too. Uh, it doesn't happen in this one, because of course, we're permanently crouching. Uh, but yeah, you just keep doing this for a little while longer. Let's say they get faster, so... 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, that'll do the trick. There we go. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah. So they actually you can actually see that this uh this jump rope here says could you move that please? So apparently they've noticed that the R is there, but they still let you do that, which is a bit strange. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah. Anyway, we are gonna move the R now. Uh we're gonna take it over here. So as I mentioned earlier, this taxi here. Uh, what happens when you get in the taxi is it just drives forward past that stop where it says stops there and that enters a sub area But you don't need to use a taxi to do it using any capture will work because the only capture that you can do this with besides the taxi Are these letters because of a glitch? Um, so if I just walk forward here It will at a certain point just make me enter the sub area as you can see uh, We won't be doing it right now. I just want to demonstrate that uh, Right now, we're going to go back and use the letters for their intended purpose, so you can see what that is. Uh, yeah, let's bring this back out here. Uh, so yeah, basically, as you can see, there's, there's five little indentations in the ground. You just want to plop the five letters in order into those indentations. Uh, they will lock into place when you give them the right spots, so it's pretty easy. As you can see, they sort of snap into place. And... You just want to spell out Mario's name like this. Pretty easy. And once you've done that, Unpower Moon will of course pop out. There we go.
ba da ba da ba da ba Yeah! Very good. Uh, next we'll talk to Jam and Toad over here. Revving a tiny engine. I don't think I actually have that one yet. Uh, yeah, actually, I haven't done that yet. Uh, the music they want is the RC car music. To hear that, you have to go do the RC car actual race, which is inside this building over here. Uh, this fellow here is, is telling you about it. Basically, what you want to do is go around this track within a certain amount of time by capturing Jeff from accounting here. And the music is very Mario Kart-esque, it's cute. Uh, there are two moons you can get here. There's one you can get on the A side for doing it within a certain time, and there's one with a tighter time that unlocks when you open the moon rock. So, we're only doing the first one here, because, you know, we haven't um, opened the moon rock, so we won't be able to get that one yet. I forget what the time is. I think we might have missed it. 29 seconds. I think it's less than that. But I forget how much it is. No, we got it. Okay. Um... Okay, so that's, that's the first moon, which is pretty easy. Uh, the other challenge is... Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! The other RC car moon is quite a bit harder. You have to do it in a more precise time. Uh, but that one's not too tricky. Uh, now that we've done that, we can go to Jam and Toad and play the music we just heard. Uh, as soon as you hear a piece of music, it appears on your music list. So you can play it to Toad, get moons out of it. Hello, Jam and Toad. I believe revving a tiny engine, the only one that works is the RC car theme. Um, I could be wrong, there might be another one that works. But that's the only one I can think of that fits that description, so... Anyway, we get a move from that. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! That's five moons, making good progress. Uh, you get a reward for getting a certain number of Jam and Toad moons. Uh, that gives an 8-bit version of Break Free, which is awesome. Uh, there's also another one we can get for doing all the Jamming Toad moons, which we will be doing. We just haven't done it yet. Uh, there's a bird flying around here. I can't quite see where it is, though. Uh, and it's a bit annoying. I might let that wait for now. Uh, if we go over here, capture this, we can look at something in the sky. Specifically the Sphinx. And the Sphinx will give us another Power Moon. Probably gonna have about 10 moons in this video. Uh, just a relatively short video, basically. There we go. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Okay, so that's six. Um, can't see the bird. There's the bird. Okay. This bird is especially annoying because there's not really any capture you can use to help you out. You just gotta do it manually, basically. Uh, I'll come back to that in a bit. Uh, let me see, we already did that sub-area. Uh, if we... Yeah, let's give this a look. Uh, over here you can see everyone's queuing up to go into this theatre. Uh, you can tell it's a theatre because... I think there's a sign, maybe? Maybe not, uh, but when you go inside you can tell it's a theatre because it looks like a theatre. As you can see, it's the original Super Mario Bros. Uh, And you get to play through 1-1 in this game. Uh, there's some moon shards scattered around. Because this game doesn't have any power-ups, there aren't like mushrooms to get or anything like that. Uh, but there are two moons to be had. And there's also actually a hidden life up part, which I'm going to see if I can find. Um, it's hit apparently in the same spot as a 1-up in the original game, but I don't know where that 1-up is. Uh, I'm not an SMB1 expert. There it is. Okay. This is the only 8-bit... Uh, one apart in the game normally. You can also get one by scanning the Peach Amiibo, but I... You know, you can't normally do that unless you have a Peach Amiibo, so... Uh, Moonshot up there... Let's see... Um, as usual, this is a little harder than it otherwise would be, because we can't really build up any momentum, and our jumps are severely limited, and we have to jump to move, etc, etc. Lots of 
restrictions on our movement, basically. Uh, as usual, the moon shards will stay collected if we fall down a pit or something, so that's not much, not really anything to worry about. Um, uh, I would like to face the other way, please, because that's the way I'm going. But yeah, you basically just do the level normally, because all the moon shards are in pretty obvious positions. Uh, there is a pipe here somewhere that leads to a sub-area, just like in the original. I think it might be this one? Nope. Is it this one? Nope. Well, this is the end of the level, and I haven't seen it yet. Um, hmm. Might need to redo it and have another look. Uh, thankfully we don't have to worry about the entering 2D pipes problem in this one, because you don't enter through a pipe at the beginning of the game, you just sort of drop down, and the only um, vertical pipes are ones we want to go into, basically, in order to go to sub-areas and stuff. Also, I'm not sure if we saw 8-Bit Mario with this costume yet, but he looks pretty good. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! So that's the hidden moon in this area. Uh, it's not really well hidden. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good hiding place, sort of. If you already know about that area, then... Oh. Oh, okay. Um. Alright. Um. Hmm. Uh. Hmm. Okie dokie. Um, I might want to just cap warp out of here, honestly. Yeah, I, I'm just going to cap warp out, um, because that's much harder than I expected to get out of. Uh, uh, let's just go to the plaza. So you can cap warp out of a 2D area, you don't get stuck in them, um, thankfully, which is very helpful. Uh, you can see Pauline's over there, we can talk to her and do some stuff to get a moon, but we won't do that just yet. Uh, so yeah, just head back in, get the last couple of moon shards. I think there's one we missed, and then, that, and then you get the moon from that area without too much hassle. Uh, oh, it's over here, right. So yeah, let's go over here, everyone's queuing up, We're talking about the theatre. I believe they'll stay collected. They did. Uh, this counts as a sub-area, so Cappy's gonna let us know that there's a moon hidden in here somewhere. We can probably re-get the life up part, actually. It's a good chance we will, because we have to jump continuously. Um, we took damage, so we're not gonna get any reward for it. Oops. Um, hmm. Hmm. How did I miss that the first time? Because that's a really easy pipe to hit. Okay, I might need to do a little bit of... That didn't quite work. Uh, hmm. Okay. You can't walk while you're going through the pipe, because I think you're technically in mid-air. Okay, so... Gotta not land on that pipe. The one past the two Goombas. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't think it's even possible to do the, the frame perfect jump out of that one. Like, I was having a lot of trouble with it. Uh, it doesn't help that it's much harder to retry because you enter on the other side of the room. Uh, thankfully, the rest of this is pretty easy, so we should be okay. Okay, uh, yeah, one Goomba here. Jump on the edge of the pipe, there we go. And we get the life up up, which gives you a bunch of coins if you've already got full health, so that's nice. Uh, I believe we already got... Oops, now I'm facing the wrong way. Let me just fix that. Basically, if you skid off an edge, you can turn around. Uh, because skidding off an edge puts you in a regular jump instead of a crouch jump. For whatever reason. 
I don't know if that's like based on how it worked in the original game or something. I don't think the original game had crouching. No, it, of course it had crouching. What are you talking about? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I think I need to stay moving forward here in order to get up enough momentum to actually reach the, the last power, power moon shard at the end here. Oh. Oh, that's tricky. Mm. It might be possible? Maybe. Uh, to retry, we actually have to go through the whole level again, so... Let's see. Let's see how we go here. We may need to use two-player mode again. Uh, I don't think that's a problem, because there's a two-player game option right there, so they're clearly expecting you to do that. <laughs> yeah, that was a joke, I'm joking. <laughs> okay, uh, nothing respawn. We don't get another life up part, which is a bit sad. Also, we took a hit there. Uh, you don't actually ever shrink from taking hits in this game, which is a bit interesting. Uh, even when you're in the side-scrolling areas. You stay big, Mario. Uh, there were originally a couple of sprites for, for becoming small Mario. I think there might still be some in the game. Uh, but it, it just never happens. Uh, I'm not sure why they changed that. I guess they had their reasons. Ooh, okay. Uh, okay, I think we're gonna need to play a mode to make it over there. That's annoying. Doable, though. Alright, so if we just flip into two-player mode, I'll grab a Joy-Con so that we can do a Cappy Hover. Because, yeah, that, that, that's quite a, large, quite a large gap. I think to jump it, we need to basically be going at full speed. And we can't really otherwise do that apart from using two-player mode. Um, I'll have to re-crouch when we go into two-player mode, because reasons. I guess it just resets what the controllers are doing and forgets that I was already holding a button. Alright, so, yeah, as we saw before, when you are in a 2D section with Cappy, you can do a little hovery thing by pressing Cappy's jump button, or, you know, B button. It's not as good as a regular jump in terms of height, but uh, it gives you a lot more horizontal distance because it's a hover. Which means we can probably clear that gap without any trouble. Uh, I don't think there'd be a way to do it without that, because you do need to be running like full speed to make that jump normally. And we can't run at all in a 2D section, uh, let alone at full speed. You cannot build up as much momentum as you normally could. Also, I'm hitting basically every Goomba here, just, just that's, that's just gonna happen. Uh, okay, is the Cappy Hover enough? I think it might be, uh, hopefully. Oh, okay. So we need Cappy Hover, and we need to do a regular jump first. Okay, um, it's gonna take some dexterity on my part. <laughs> I'm not actually playing with another person. Like, it's it's still still a one-player game, even though I'm using two controllers. So yeah, it takes a bit of dexterity. Uh, we don't want to go down this pipe, so let's carefully just avoid the middle of it. There we go. Thankfully, if you do it like that and carefully avoid touching the very middle of the pipe, you won't go down, so it's not a problem. I'm taking a lot of damage here. Uh, maybe I should lap up hot. Maybe not. I'm pretty close to the end, I think I'm probably fine. Hopefully I'll get it this time. We'll see how we go. So, yeah, uh, we're gonna have to do a regular jump, and then... Okay, this is gonna be a bit... Okay! <laughs> and there's the moon. Oh my goodness. Uh, how are we doing? That's uh, eight. Okay, I'm gonna grab like two more. I think get to a good, a nice even ten. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Okay, uh, let's go back to single player mode now. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that jump is impossible in single player. So. Two player it is. Uh, got to read rubber band because when you switch number of players, it just, it just does that for reasons. There we go. Okay. Okay, how are we doing here? Uh, let me see. Well, I'm thinking about ten moons, so I reckon I'll go do that sub area that we saw earlier. Um, I'll get the intended way this time, just to mix things up a little. Uh, if you head over 
this taxi here, you can capture it to become a taxi, and you just hold the stick forward to drive. You don't have any control over where it goes, for whatever reason. There we go. Uh, and that warps you over here. What you're supposed to do here is capture the tanks and blow a bunch of stuff up in order to get the moon shards. I'm going to try to do it without any tanks. Um, I believe it's mostly doable. I'm not sure if it's entirely doable. So I'm going to see how we go. Um, let's see. So there's a moon shard there. Um, the easiest way to get these is pretty much to shoot them because hitting them with a bullet that you fired from one of your tanks will collect it. Um, but I believe you can just go with the tanks into shooting stuff and get it that way. Uh, this looks like it's something good, but I think it's just coins. Yeah, it's just coins. Um, so yeah, you can navigate most of this area without too much trouble, just using Cappy's bounces, because she is amazing. Uh, okay, that's two shards. Unfortunately, moon shards do not heal you the way not the regular moons do. Uh, as you can see, there is an invisible bridge here. Uh, I didn't realise that at first. I thought you had to do the long jump, which is not that hard. Uh, I believe this is where the moon spawns once we manage to get it to spawn. Uh, you can see there's some sparkling up there. To get that, which is the other moon up here, we will have to use a tank. I don't think there's a way to go with them into shooting that spot without actually capturing one, which is a bit annoying. So, how we do? Two moon shards out of many to break some of these things ourselves. I don't really remember where. Oops. Rubber band. Rubber band. Uh, this sub area also has some fairly unique music. Uh, this is one of the two New Donk City Night themes, uh, rather than being just a regular sub area theme. Uh, rubber band slipped again. I clearly didn't put it on properly just then. Okay, that should do it. Okay. So yeah, that one over there, you can get it just with just with Cappy and some precise movement, so I'm gonna try to do that now. Um, basically, because you can collect moon shards by throwing Cappy at them, all we gotta do is just make our way down there and throw her at the right time. Sort of like that bit better. Uh, we also might just be able to do a cap bounce and get up there. Do it that way. Yeah, okay, that works. Cool. Uh, where are the other ones? I think some of them might actually be inside these uh, breakable things that you can shoot with the tanks. I don't really remember. I haven't done this area in a while. I'll take that heart, thanks. I don't think there's one just here, because there was one on the other side of this pillar in basically the same spot, and that seems a bit lazy. But maybe that's what they did. Uh, I don't remember where the other ones are. I think you'd have to blow up some stuff. Uh, let me just go with these tanks and shooting some stuff. Okay, yeah, there is. Um, there we go. So yeah, when when this um when this pillar falls down, the moon shard comes with it and becomes a really obvious one. But if you don't knock it down, it's still up there and you can still get it. Uh, I think one might be inside one of these cars. Um, the tanks can completely just destroy these, which is kind of funny. Um, but I don't think any of them will shoot all the way down here from where they are. I may need to capture one, capture a, ca capture one of the shams to do this last bit. It's a little frustrating. Uh, although, no, it's not over here. I think I think it's inside one of the tanks. All right, let's go grab a tank and do it that way. Still, four out of five ain't bad. 
after you capture them. Um, we discussed these earlier. They have motion controls to aim, or you can shoot the right stick, which is. Uh, I like the combination of the two, kind of like in Splatoon. I like to use um, the analog for horizontal aiming and motion controls for vertical. It feels really precise that way. Ba -ba -dum. Okay, so there's the moon, uh, and the other moon is in that rock there. So we'll just shoot a couple of bullets that way. When it's released, it actually goes all the way over to that um, ledge I said you had to long jump to earlier. So I'm just gonna make my way back up there. So we can grab it. Out of the way. These tanks don't wear any hats, so you can't like throw Cappy near them unless without accidentally capturing them, which is a little annoying. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Alright, I'm just gonna hop down and grab that other one. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! That's 10 moons. I think that's a pretty good total for this video, so I'm just gonna go cash these in, and that'll be the video. Down, or band slipped again. I might need a fresh one. There. Okay, yeah. Just head back to the Odyssey. Um, you can climb up all of these poles and stuff. This, this, one of the good things about New Dong City is that there's a lot of dynamic um, furniture around that you can interact with in an exciting way, which I enjoy. Um, okay, so we'll cash in these ten moons, and then we'll be done for this video. There we go. It's uh, 4.29, making good progress. Uh, some new products were added. I might go have a peek at what they are just before we continue. Uh, the shop here is just down there. You can actually see a gigantic sign for the cutie cap store over here. And there's two separate entrances depending on which one you want, it doesn't really make any difference because they both lead to the same room. You can actually just go through here over to the yellow side without any trouble. Uh, you can't control the camera in here, it just goes to the room you happen to be in. Also, it's pretty easy to get behind the counter in these ones, which is interesting uh, compared to some of the others. Uh, I'm going to change to the builder outfit while I'm here. I was intending to talk to the other cashier, but I forgot. Uh, we need this builder outfit, which is a reference to Super Mario Maker, to get into a costume room in this kingdom. So we'll be doing that probably in the next video. Uh, there's Mario wearing his Super Mario Maker outfit. There we go. Uh, if we just talk to this... This fellow here, we can just scroll along and see what's available. Uh, Okay, we're getting close. Uh, as you can see, we can get Bowsette's hat here. Uh, once we get Bows once the next thing after Bowsette's hat is her um, suit for the wedding, which goes with the hat. Um, and then the next two things after that are the ones I'm really excited about. Uh, you can probably guess what they are since these two are Bowser's wedding outfit. Sorry, Bowsette's wedding outfit. Um, kind of hilariously, the Bowsette's um, suit also includes her shell, so Mario gets a great big turtle shell with spikes. It's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, I'm excited about the one that comes after that, which we'll be getting access to very soon. Uh, but for now, uh, that's it for this video. Oh, something interesting just to point out. Uh, this hat is made of plastic, the version of Cappy we're using right now. And you get a different bounce noise. Um, depending on what kind, which kind of costume Cappy is wearing, the noise when you bounce off of it changes. Uh, it sounds kind of metallic here, which is a bit strange because the hat is clearly made of plastic. Um, but there are other hats made of metal, in which case it makes more sense. But yeah, the normal bounce noise off of the regular like cloth hats is, is very different to this one, which is very metal-y. And I think that's an interesting detail. Um, it has no effect on gameplay, because regardless of what hat you're wearing, the bounce works exactly the same way, and you get the same amount of height and the same amount of distance, etc, etc. But it's a cool detail, nonetheless. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.